Hi everybody, welcome tonight to our Bible study. Good evening. We've been talking about uh, disciples and people of the way and we are on session three, Jesus teaches his disciples. Disciples are called to learn about Jesus and to learn from Jesus. And we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the difference and, um, and where you are in your walk there. And so we're just going to um, jump right in. We are indeed. So let's, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ways that you've called us into your kingdom. Um, there are many various ways that you've called us into the kingdom, but we thank you that the, the folks listening to the sound of my voice, they've responded and said yes. And yeah, so, and we continue to say yes. So we're asking you tonight to speak clearly to our hearts, speak through your word, give us wisdom to understand the truths that, that we're gonna hear from your word. And Lord, help us submit to you as our teacher and commit to applying this through the life. And that's our big, that's our big goal, Lord, yes, is we wanna apply. We wanna be doers of your word, yes, not Lord. hearers only. We pray oh. th for the folks that'll have various needs that, that are unrelated to this study tonight. That as we focus on you, your word said, seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness Amen. and all the things all that we need. Things. So I know there's folks that need healing and this is this, this Bible study isn't about healing. I know there's folks that need stuff in their family, all that. As we focus on you, Lord, yes, we Lord. believe that you will minister to those needs at the same time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So as you're backtracking, I'm just when I, I miss my part, I'm sorry. I want to have you think about something. And <laughs> if you're watching this in the replay, I really do think you should pause right here in just a moment and really take a moment to think about this. And if you're watching it live, maybe you can write this down for later on. But I want you um, to really be thinking about uh, what did you learn in the last few weeks? What did you learn about Jesus? What have you learned about the disciples? Um, and to really, what kind of questions would you like to ask? What kind of questions would you have liked to ask Jesus if you were his disciple during the time? And to really be thinking about those kind of things, to put yourself as the 13th disciple or as another person sitting and listening, because we really are. What a we, great concept. Yes. 13th disciple. I think that sounds like the name of a good article Somebody or book to should read. Write, I know. Okay. Seriously, I, I really like that. So be thinking about that as we, and I hope you're doing those, the, the readings or some readings, even again, I just keep encouraging you that whatever it is you're reading the Bible, God's gonna find a way to connect that to what we're doing. Um, so really just make sure that you're either reading what we're putting up or reading something on your own. Well, well I have to tell you what happens with me and you, you need to be relieved of any guilt. What happens with me with the, these, um, you can either go wide or you can go, uh, go deep. And I end up kind of going deep as because I'll do like the first one or two, mm -hmm. and if and whichever one strikes fire with me, yeah. you know, whichever one strikes fire, I'll just like zero in on that, and that's as far as I'm getting for the week. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't go any. So a little bit of honesty here, except for prepping for this. So I, so what I end up doing is I end up just focusing on the one, and if I read one that yeah okay I know that yeah, and I just I just go on and go to the one that all of a sudden yeah. God makes it special. And I'm like, okay, here's where we stop. Here's where the Holy Spirit does the work right there. So if, as long as you're doing something yes. that gives the Holy Spirit an opportunity. Just grab you. Gra to grab <laughs> right. you. If you don't, if you don't make the opportunity, yeah. it won't happen. But if you make the opportunity, um, God will get a Oh get my a gosh, he will. And I, we, we started back to school a week ago, but this week the littlest ones came back to school. And I won't take long with this, but it just is a reminder, even though that's not the area I typically spend my educational time in, I like them taller and snarky. But I love playing with them and I love interacting with these little ones and but they're little little and their hearing and thinking and focusing skills are not so much. And sometimes you just feel like you need to go here, come here. 
come here and now listen. And I really feel like that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do with us. Yes. He wants to take you, come here, little child who's not listening, come here and take his, your face in his hands and say, I want you to read this. So remember that you're not just a disciple or a sheep, you're God's child. And so he's talking to us. And so we're going to start talking about this idea of counterfeit. And if I say that word counterfeit, what is the first thing that pops into your head? And I think when you hear money. the word counterfeit, right, money. Our and, work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, people people make counterfeit, they, they, they copy the masters and try to... But you and I them. both know why our work would not be the first thing that came into my head okay. when I said, because Beth can't draw a straight line with the ruler. Okay. So, you know, maybe Hangman is about as creative and artistic <laughs> as I can get. And whoever thought Hangman was a really good children's game in the first place? But that's besides the point. So we're talking about this idea of counterfeits and, and criminals uh, making these counterfeit bills and trying to pass them off as genuine. Now we have this cool little reader at Hobby Lobby where if we get a 50 or a $100 bill, we get put it underneath this little purple light and there's a little band that comes up and that's how you tell. Except the older bills, it doesn't, you can't tell so well. And so you really do, it, it leads us to this place of needing to know what real money feels like, what the real deal feels like, what, what the paper feels like and, and what it is to be a genuine bill. And so people who work in banks and people who work with a lot of money are trained to know what these real bills feel like. Um, because it would be so easy for these $100 fake bills to come through and it would just kind of be a mess. And so you learn how to tell the genuine article. <clears throat> and the same is true for people and for disciples. And I think the longer that you're a Christian or the more tuned in you are to the Lord and, and being able to hear the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to know what a real disciple is like. And I'm going to stretch that even though this is about disciples to say somebody who's speaking, some big name pastor. Lots of them are fantastic and great. Just because they're on TV doesn't mean they're a shyster, but it doesn't mean they're right. speaking the Word of God either. Mm -hmm. And so the longer, um, my, I can hear my mother's voice in my head, that just knowing the genuineness of it. And I'll tell you one of the Bible verses that doesn't have anything to do, yes, we're going back to the Old Testament here, but one of the Bible stories... If we get Jonah. It's not Jonah this time, <laughs> okay, though. Percent. It's Balaam and his donkey. Oh, all right, all right. This is, this is good. It's this a is new, a new one. <laughs> it's a new one. And it, what was interesting, and you should really go back and read it. Read it this week. Read the whole story. Have it read to you. Really cool listening to it and listening to the progression of this guy who was taking money to curse people, and yet God was genuinely talking to him and stopping him from doing some things, and then he was getting around it. So he definitely was this counterfeit who had these moments of being real. And so, and you know, God put a stop to the whole thing, but you really should go back and read that story because it's really amazing and makes you think. I'm still thinking about it. And, and how that all went. But, and I think that, that there's a point to that, which is God did speak through this counterfeit shyster of a guy who was taking money and to, to prophesy incorrectly and to curse. And so you do really have to be in a place where you begin to recognize what a true disciple is because they can speak the right words. They can even occasionally be right on track and still be a counterfeit. Ah, uh, yeah. Listen, I, um, you remember that Jesus, when he was healing people, uh, the demons used to follow him and say, he's the son of God. And Jesus would command them to shut up. And I, Can you it, imagine it, Jesus it, it, telling, really? Like, <laughs> that's <the> really right. <laughs> <Can I tell? laughs> you know, shut up. Jesus tells them to shut up Oof. because be, because they are praising him and saying this from an insincere mouth. Mm. And um, there are a lot of, there, the question in our study says, what are some common actions of Jesus' disciples that are easy to counterfeit? Can you think of one? Well, Judas managed for a long time. He took care of the money. Of course, they didn't really know how well he was taking yeah, care exactly. of the money. Exactly. There's all kinds of things you can you can be working at the church. You can you can be worshiping, and, oh, and yeah. you, can, you can worship and and honestly, you can just perform the music. And some of the music is good, and some you know just turn it on, okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can preach. 
You, you, we see time after time we've seen people who are preaching and not living what they're preaching. Um, they preached the truth, what they said was not wrong. Uh, but they weren't living it. Yeah. Uh, can I tell you something else that will seem very righteous? Sometimes is righteous indignation, and sometimes it's just the it, it's just the wrath of man. It, it, the, the scripture says doesn't work the righteousness of God. Mm. Um, stuff that I, uh, recently I, I was uh, connected with somebody who was just got into the oh the clothesline form of holiness. Do you know that? When it's like, yeah. oh, guys with long hair and women should wear dresses mm -hmm. and you know, they should have their heads covered. And uh, that stuff sounds like holiness and it's, it has absolutely nothing to do no. with holiness. Honestly, it really doesn't. It, it really doesn't. Um, is there, should there be holiness and appropriateness in dress? Sure, sure. Oh, but yeah. honestly, you, you know what appropriate clothes, cl wear clothes. <laughs> wear clothes. Is, is there a lot of skin showing? Maybe you need to wear more, more clothes. clothes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, we've all seen gals wearing outfits that you've seen more cotton in an aspirin bottle. But, 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 uh, but sounds like a country song. Seriously. But we've yeah. seen guys wearing stuff that was inappropriate. We've, we've yeah. seen that. But honestly, that's not where holiness is found. Mm. Holiness is found in, in a heart that is separated from sin to God. You can address all that stuff and not have true holiness. These things are easy to fake. For me, what it comes back to, I, there are some people, there are some key people in my life that I have seen that I go, that was the real deal. Mm. Pastor Weaver and, and his dear wife, my home pastor, mm. he is the real deal. He is the real deal. Now, you know, and I, you've heard me tell, he couldn't preach. He was not a good preacher. <laughs> he was a good man. Yeah. He was a Christ follower. He told, taught me what it meant to follow Christ. And he was the same behind closed doors as he was on That's the huge. stage. Pastor Bruno. His theology, I'm just going to I'll be straight up with you. He did not go to Bible college. He did not, he, uh, he, he was an educated man, but he did not, was not educated in theology. Yeah. His theology was not spot on in everything. But man, following Jesus, he was the real deal. Oh, yeah. He was the real deal. He was sold out for Jesus. Yeah. His wife, his wife, oh, they, they sure. patterned War Room, the yeah. lady from War Room Absolutely. after Molly. She's the real deal. She's the real deal. Not an educated yeah. lady, not a... a Sister Molly was amazing. And for me, every person, and why I say that the real deal is because they followed Jesus when nobody was looking. They followed Jesus yes. when it wasn't popular. They followed Jesus when it cost them t heartache and tears. And folks, we need to get back to that idea. Because with the way things, the culture is now, we've got to get the, back to this culture. The real deal is that you follow Jesus even when it costs you. And not just for your own sake, but for the people who are looking at you. For, for your children or your grandchildren or the people at your job or the people at your work. Um, I, you know, I, we've talked about this before. A, a lot of the reason anymore, I keep those couple of shifts at, at Hobby Lobby is because I, I love the, the non-church people that I come in contact mm -hmm. with and, and being able to have an interaction and knowing that, that my things are being watched and, and my interactions with them are important. Um, so people are watching you. So for that, you need to be genuine. You not mm -hmm. only need to recognize counterfeits in other places and know truly what a real disciple of Christ looks like, but you need to be a real disciple of Christ. And we're going to take a look in just a couple bits and pieces at one of the most famous sermons um, there was, and, and you have your Bible out, or again, you're, you're watching this in a replay, you can pause this, and I would encourage you to go ahead and read Matthew chapter 5 through 7. I mean, it's three chapters, it's not 30 chapters, and these are great if you have a red letter Bible, these are, you know, Jesus' words primarily, but I'm going to read some of it here, and it is no doubt the famous, ser most famous sermon ever preached, and again, every time I think about these, Jesus on this hillside with 
all of these thousands of people and what his voice must have sounded like. Mm -hmm. No amplification, no cool handless, uh, cordless, you know, <laughs> handless mics. Yeah. It's just Jesus' voice. And Matthew 5, 1 and 2 says, When he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them. And so you get this vision of the disciples maybe being here, and the people being there, and whoever he's primarily speaking to, everybody's listening. And then if you go to Matthew 7, and then verses 24 through 29, it says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a sensible man who built his house on the rock. I, I want to start singing now, but I mm -hmm. won't. The, I might. the rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and pounded that house, yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock. Now pause there for a minute. We have been in this storm over the last six months in, in, a, in a global way, mm -hmm. literally a global way. This storm around us, and those of you who, whose faith and whose homes have been built on Christ Jesus and, and a, a faith in Him and a trust in Him that this world is not our home and that, that we are passing through and that God has this plan for us, it's been scary, it's been upsetting, things aren't the way they should be, but we're still solid. We haven't been swept out into the ocean. But it says, everyone who hears these words of mine, this is still Jesus talking, and doesn't act on them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the wind blew, pounded the house, and it collapsed. And this last line, I love this version, whatever this version is, it says, and its collapse was great, like huge. When Jesus had finished the sermon, the crowds were astonished at his teaching because he was teaching them like one who had authority and not and not like their scribes. Mm -hmm. Scribes were supposed to have authority. I don't know what that said about the scribes or it said amazing things about Jesus' word. But he made that that difference right there. So how would you summarize the primary message of those scripture passages? Really seriously think about this. If you're watching this live, jot this down so you can do this later. How would you summarize the message of those verses, especially that, you know, the wise man built his house upon the rock. I couldn't help it, just one line. <laughs> um, how would you summarize that? Think about that. Think about that for your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need to turn the page or I'm going to break out into song again. But that is a serious visual right there, especially for those of us who live in coastal Massachusetts. The, the idea of building on rock and, instead of sand, okay, we've done this to death, but here, let's, let's make this practical and, and now. Um, let's make this practical because we are in a time when there, there are things that are constantly changing. Um, when, when I was taking care of the Brondike uh, cottage, we, his back porch was sinking. Mm -hmm. And the, the, you couldn't co close the door, the windows were cracking, they were going out of square. Oh. So I, I said, you know, let me see about jacking this up. So I went down and I dug down and, and I, I made some cement piers and I started jacking it up. Uh, because I had done this stuff back when I was sure. a young man um, in the mobile home business. And then I went to jack in the middle, right where the door, right where it was sagging the worst. and. I discovered I put my hand in a hole and I'm like oh my goodness what's going on here and there was n there was a hole and about 18 inches down there was splashy water because there was water actually running underneath oh my goodness house. so no wonder it's sinking so where there where there is water a flow things are going to change so what I did is I took a, a, a four by six piece of wood and I found a couple of rocks a couple of boulders boulders are our friends rocks are our friends okay <laughs> and I spanned those two rocks because in the middle there was nothing to jack on oh. in, in this and so I spanned that it was kind of a jerrig thing under there, and I'm you doing this in a, crawl, it, huh? in, in a crawl space. And finally, oh I could goodness. get a place where I could jack and, and then, then put some upright wood and jack this thing and bring it back into square. And I brought it up, uh, the, it, I brought it up almost three inches. So it's, 
here's what I'm, I'm saying. We are in a situation where things are changing constantly. Um, one of my one of my wonderful deacons just talked to me about you know the the whole uh, the 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 new. Uh, pronouns that you're all you're supposed to use for these people and how do we handle this this and if you don't have a foundation the the if you don't have a foundation and found it on rock and say look I know this is true and I know this is a situation and I've got to let some of this now the water I couldn't stop the water I didn't right. dam the water the water continued to flow but it didn't matter because I found two solid things, two large boulders right. to put, put to bridge and to jack off of something that didn't move. If you don't have the yeah. truth of God in your life, you're, then that as things flow, the house collapses. Um, one of the hallmarks of Jesus' sermon was that he regularly turned common wisdom on its head to show what a true disciple looks like. And he kept repeating this phrase. He had this phrase and he repeats it a lot. You have heard that it was said by, and he references Old Testament, but they were not the Old Testament verses. He was talking about the interpretations of the Old Testament verses. And then he would ratchet up the tension by saying, but I tell you. So he would say, you have heard that it was said, yeah. but I tell you. And so he was calling his disciples to a higher form of obedience. And uh, a lot of his statements, again, I'm going to come, when he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain. He And after he sat down, his disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Notice that not everyone heard Jesus teaching from the same place. Not everyone followed him up the mountain, even yep. though they, they stayed where they were. The disciples, the closest ones yep. to him, followed him on up the mountain. Now Jesus uses this mountain. Jesus is clever with physics and, and with sound and his voice. He must have had a big voice. And folks, people did this in the ancient world because they did not have they did not have amplification. Sure. Uh, Alexander the Great uh, addressed tens of thousands of troops uh, mm. sometimes had a powerful voice. People would develop these powerful voices so they could speak. And, and we've all, you know, we've all known people that have that kind of voice, voice that can be heard. Yes. But he used, he used the mountainside as a natural amphitheater. Yeah, at one point he uses, he goes out in a boat and uses the reflection of the water. Isn't that so, cool <laughs> that the creator of the universe who created those things yeah, in yeah, the first yeah. place is now using the science of using it? Using the science, I love yes, it. yes, exactly, that's, that's exactly. Cool. So that people can both see and hear yeah. because when he goes up high on the mountain, people can, it's a natural amphitheater, people can see and they can hear better. When he goes out in the boat, there's separation, they can see and people can't crowd so people but can't. the disciples went close to him exactly the disciples yeah. went close to him and and well that the disciples obey what they learn and they were right there like they had to put themselves in that place to learn it wasn't at this point they had chosen to follow him after he'd called mm. and and now they were doing something about it and now now it's more than just learning now it's beginning to obey and to do. Um, and it talks about there being a, a big difference between students and disciples and just thinking what that meant now that where school is in session and at least for the short term I've got some students in a, in a class I don't normally teach and most of the time they want to know, you know, what's for homework and is this going to count? Do I have to take notes on this? Because they're just trying to get the information for the sake of the information and then some of the, the school and ministry classes that I took with people who were trying to finish up some ministerial classes it wasn't just the test although it is kind of funny it still was kind of the test at that point but you knew that these people were here to really uh, learn more from it because they were going to start doing it and mm -hmm. obeying and we're doing it already and so a couple other verses um, from Matthew 7 15 through 17 says beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing and you've heard that expression before but inwardly are ravaging wolves you'll recognize them by their fruit Jesus tells you that you'll recognize them by their fruit are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles in the same way every good tree produces good fruit but a bad tree 
produces bad fruit. And this really does co collide a little bit and it's a different study and a different focus, the idea of not judging people because that's not exactly what that means. But exactly. Jesus is telling us if there's bad fruit coming from that tree, you can draw some conclusions and you should draw some conclusions and vice versa. Um, and, and so he, Jesus regularly warned these people to be conscious of not, other, not just other people's fruit, but their own fruit. To be aware, like we were talking about before, about that example that you're portraying. And then, and then the question is, when have you experienced the tension? And, and we know from, from the Golgotha story that the disciples really were put in this position, experiencing the tension between believing something to be true and then acting on that belief. And I think that's where the disciples have some really good examples of times when they knew or they'd had that learning and they just couldn't make the connection or they were too afraid or whatever. And then, and then the times in their ministry, how they all ended their lives, taking that, it, taking that learning from Christ and doing what he told them to do and giving the last measure of their strength and devotion for him. This is written by this, this Sermon on the Mount from, from Matthew chapter five through uh, seven. Um, this, is, this is the Sermon on the Mount and Matthew had an incredible memory mm. and he writes down more of this sermon than anybody else. Other people have snippets of it, but he has the whole thing. And, and think of some of the things that are countercultural there. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Well, Matthew is not a good Jewish man. He has, <laughs> he has, he has, he has betrayed his own yeah. to work with the Romans to become a tax collector. And, and he doesn't think it's be good to be poor in anything. No. And blessed are those who mourn, they'll be comforted. Blessed are the meek. He's like, are you kidding me? Blessed are the meek, you know, they get taken advantage of. Um, uh, uh, rejoice when people pers persecute you and, and speak all manner of falsehood against you. Yeah. They did the same thing in the prophets. He doesn't, and this is so countercultural to, to him, and he's, it, he sees this tension, and Jesus is showing him something he's never seen that yeah. is, and folks, w Jesus is showing us the real deal. And we have a form of Christianity in America today that it has nothing, very little to do with Jesus. Has, it has to do with belief and it has to do with politics and it has to do with identity and who you identify with, but it has less to do with Jesus. It would be great if we could, as Christians, we could identify with Jesus. And Isn't then, that a great idea? Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> and then the other part of that, the idea of the obedience mm -hmm. to actually do, do what he says. Obedience is crucial. If you have not in your Christian life yet learned that obedience is is the bedrock is the wow. foundation then there there is a limit you are going to continue being that shifting sand situation obedience is just so important they, it's it's the only way that that foundation is going to work something you said just tripped my yeah. trigger before because you said you said that the disciples put themselves in a place where they could learn yeah. we and you said that they came up higher. Not everybody came up higher on the mountain, but the disciples did. They came up higher with Jesus. Now everybody's kind of sort of listening, yeah. but they are listening more intently and they went up with him. But the, actually they had been doing this already. They had already left jobs and left, uh, left families yeah. and, and changed what they were doing to be closer to Jesus, to obey. And, and you, can't, you can't stay where you are and follow Jesus. That, that's, no. Uh, um, the next part in this lesson that I really like is being part of a community is a great way to engage in Jesus' teaching in a way that fosters both understanding and obedience. It really helps to be around good people. Uh, that is a loss right now. That is, that is something yeah. that we're feeling uh, with this isolation. Uh, that's not as easy as, um, as it seems. I know that I look forward to, Linny and I look forward to these nights when you come over to, to mm. the parsonage and you grab a little uh, 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 yeah. supper with us and then we do this recording. Um, I, I look forward to the, uh, with, with Pastor Derek a lot of times, I look forward to the, the times that we are after the service where we're just yeah. hanging out and decompressing in the office. Uh, 
that that fellowship it strengthens us it's more than just friendship uh, fellowship and and the strengthening that we have is more than just uh, uh, more than just friendship it's this uh, it, it's this strengthening that we get when the Spirit of God in you bears witness to the Spirit of God in me and vice versa. Um, Matthew chapter 6, we're still in the, notice we're still in the yeah. Sermon on the Mount. These three chapters comprise the Sermon on the Mount. Would you turn to verses 25 through 34? I'm going to read it to you. Lenny, put as much on the screen as you can. Don't, don't go crazy. Uh, I hope you have your very own Bible open and open that right now. So verse 25, for these reasons and more, you, we need to work together to engage in the following portion of Jesus' teaching. Here it is. This is why I tell you, don't worry about your life, mm -hmm. what you'll eat or what you'll drink. About, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add a single cubit to his height by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Learn how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was adorned as one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry, saying, what do we eat? What do we drink? Or what do we wear? For the idolaters eagerly seek all these things, mm. and your heavenly Father knows that you need him. But, and I... Talked about this when we first started. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will pro be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That is a fantastic passage. And if at some point you didn't say, ouch, you probably weren't paying attention. <laughs> you know, as we wrap up today, I, it's amazing how this just connects. I, this The whole way over here today, I was having a conversation. I have a, a really sweet, dear, close friend who's with her family literally at the other end of the world in, in, in as awesome. remote a place yeah. as you could still get in the 21st century on this globe. And did everything, left everything like those disciples did. and and went with her family to just do what God was calling them to do and and has been there for a very short time nothing has looked like she thought it was gonna look and and then the world shut down and because it's an island nation they can get e neither in nor out um, and and everything is topsy-turvy and yet she was just talking about how God has been so faithful how things haven't gone the way she thought they would and and people who had offered to pledge haven't and and some money has come in from all sorts of places and they haven't had these things that we take for granted and do we need to send some emergency funds their way i think that would be fantastic let's do that, let's do that. but she was talking about how god has cared for every one of their needs in ways that she could not have imagined. And I, I'm watching that and it's humbling to me. And so I want to encourage you, you can take God at his word. You can believe him and, and you should be obedient. I should be obedient. God values obedience. Truly he does. And the things that he can do with you when you just obey, it's just amazing. And if you, have, if you don't have anything coming to mind right now as to what has happened in your life because you were obedient to God, fix that tonight. For sure. We're going to close in prayer. We are. And you make sure that 5, 6, and 7, if you don't read anything else this week, read those three chapters. Amen. God, I thank you that you tell us in your word that we don't have to worry. That doesn't mean that we're going to be rolling in every single materialistic possession that the world has to offer, but you tell us, don't worry about it. And you have other things for us to do and other things for us to think about. And we thank you for that. We thank you that you provided your wisdom and your direction and ways to be obedient to you in your word. And God, help us to be so much better disciples than we were yesterday and the day before. And continue to lead us in the way that you would have us to go. And, and though we're, we're likely very much like your own disciples from all those thousands of years ago, that sometimes we get it right and sometimes we miss the boat. 
that you will help us to do better and better each day, that you will put people in our path that we are meant to interact with and to be that good example, that we will never be a counterfeit, that we will be the genuine article, that people will look at us and say, I may not know exactly what's going on there, but I know there's something <laughs> different and that we can point people to Christ. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you next week. And uh, hey, we're gearing up for the 20th. We're going to have that uh, that wonderful uh, outdoor, outdoor service. service. It's going yeah. to be great. God bless you. See you soon. Have a good night.